Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna discuss the five guitar pedals that every guitar player should have on their pedal board. Let's get it. Before we get started, please do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment and subscribe below, hit the bell icon so you can alert every single time I upload a video. Check out some of the affiliate links in the description box below. Every click helps this channel out just a little bit. There's also a link in the description box below that allows you to donate directly to this channel. Go ahead and buy me a cup of coffee if you choose to do so. It is greatly appreciated. Now without further ado, let's get started. All right, before we jump fully into this thing, let me warn you, I'm not gonna be going over specific pedals, more so like pedals in general, like the kind of pedal you should actually have. If you wanna know some of the pedals that I've personally chosen to place on a pedal board of my own in recent years, then I'll link this video right up here, which goes over my latest pedal board rundown or playthrough, whatever, before I ended up taking my pedal board apart. Right now I'm have just a temporary setup where I swap pedals in and out of for demo purposes and that's what I got going on today. Now if you clicked on this video there's a very good chance that you're either maybe just a fan of my videos and you want to see every video I put up which if that's the case thank you but maybe you're on a pedal searching journey maybe you're just beginning you're been playing for a long time and you're thinking I need to know exactly what I should put on a pedal board and you just want to feel a little bit more inspired uh, and, and just to go on a, on a whole new journey for your pedal searching well, this is the right video for you. Today I'm gonna to discuss five pedals that I truly believe every guitar player should own. It's a must have and uh, they have changed my life and helped cultivate the very sound that I am known for to this day. Let's get right to it. Pedal number one is a compressor. Now compression pedals are one of those pedals that you know you get a lot of debates over. A lot of guitarists won't necessarily choose it in their top five like I do. Especially when you first start out, you're gonna find that a compressor pedal may not be something that you would go for. It's not a, a, a pedal that necessarily makes a noise like or makes a noticeable difference to the ear right away like maybe an overdrive or a delay or reverb can but it's one of those pedals that you're going to learn as you mature in your guitar playing that you need for specific purposes uh, specifically when you're trying to achieve a certain sound maybe those overly pristine clean tones now if you're a blues player or uh, one of those guitar players who really want to focus on sensitivity where you really want to feel the string and hear the string uh the way it's interacting with the guitar, the pickups, the, the amp, the pedal maybe, then compression may not be the most ideal thing for you. But if you're looking for that sort of uh, normalization of frequencies, uh, a pedal that'll give you that nice sparkly tone, compression, it's where it's at, man, I'm telling you. Now, whether you realize this or not, everything compresses the way we all hear things the way we our, our ears normalize loud noises or the way we hear things through radios speakers in general maybe your iphone all of that stuff is getting compressed in one way or another so you might as well learn how to play with compression and embrace compression now i'm the kind of person who has compression as an always on pedal which is why it's so important to me but i also do a lot of ambient music with a lot of clean tones so compression has been a staple in my pedal board and it's been something that, to be honest with you, I've always incorporated in almost every single pedal board I've ever put together uh, since I've been playing guitar. <laughs> Pedal number two that I think everyone should have, and that's an overdrive pedal. Overdrive pedals will drive you crazy because there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of different overdrive pedals. And there are so many amazing companies that make absolutely amazing overdrive pedals. So where do you start? Where do you begin? I think you need to identify what overdrive or what kind of overdrive you are seeking. What are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to have a, a really saturated sound or maybe a light gain sound? Uh, so for me, overdrive pedals kind of fall into a few different categories. One is sort of light gain or maybe even a transparent drive. That essentially just means that you're 
it's your guitar tone with a little bit of grit behind it or maybe you want a coloring drive maybe something like a Ibanez tube screamer something that literally changes and alters the sound but gives you a nice desired thick overdriven sound then maybe you want something more high gain more saturated so there are a ton of different pedals that fall into those categories I kind of like to sit in the middle I like transparent drives but I also like to have something that kind of changes boosts mid-range frequencies a little bit, fattens the guitar signal as a whole. So I lean towards pedals like Klon style pedals, but you don't have to do that. But I think that regardless, if you want to accomplish any kind of overdriven sound, you're gonna need an overdrive pedal. Especially if you're going into an amp that maybe even has a little bit of grit, maybe that overdrive pedal can be used not only as a standalone, but something that can push your amp into kind of more high gain saturation. <laughs> Pedal number three, and this is where I think I differ from almost anyone else, I believe every guitar player should have a volume pedal. I'm an ambient guitar player. I heavily depend on volume pedals to give me smooth transitions to allow me to creep in and creep out, basically ambient swells, droning. Without a volume pedal, uh, I know I could use my volume knob on my guitar, but I just feel more comfortable and more in control doing it with my foot and actual foot pedal like a volume pedal. Now, even if you don't use it for swells and, and, and ambient stuff, I think it's really useful as a whole, especially if you just want to confidently shut off signal from your guitar to your amp and just know that the volume pedal's down, you're not gonna get any any signal, you maybe you want to unplug a cable really quickly. Well a volume pedal is gonna do it for you really really fast. So I appreciate a volume pedal and I think that honestly everyone should have one on their pedal board. Pedal number four, delays. Now, if you are a fan of this channel, you know that I heavily depend on delays and as an ambient player, who wouldn't depend on delays, right? It is one of the most important, if not the most important pedal that I put on my pedal board. Um, and for me, I actually like having multiple delays on a pedal board. Now, just like overdrives, there are so many uh, out there that you can choose from, and they all kind of fall into basically the same few categories. You have your digital style delays, which essentially repeats your exact sound, or it's supposed to repeat your exact sound. That sometimes ends up being a little more of a in-your-face style delay because it's just repeating your exact signal. Then you have analog style delays, which tend to be probably the most popular of all delays. They have a nice warm repeat. They don't quite repeat your signal exactly the same as it continues to repeat on and on and on. It'll warm up and really get just that nice warm vintage sound. Then you have my personal favorite, which are tape delays. Tape delays really kind of go for that vintage sound. Tape delays repeat similarly to analog delays with just, uh, they get warmer as it repeats. It just changes your sound just a little bit and it almost gets a little more vintagey and, and crackly basically what you would expect from a tape style delay. Then you have different repeat patterns. Maybe you want a quarter note delay, maybe you want a dotted eighth delay. My personal favorite, I like combining them both together. So I like having a pedal that can have a dual delay setting or literally two delays, one giving me a quarter note and one giving me a dotted eighth. I know this is kind of cheating, but I am using one pedal to accomplish this sound. <laughs> And last but not least, pedal number five, reverb. Believe it or not, even though I am an ambient guitar player, I actually didn't start using reverb till much, much later in my career, to the point where I didn't even have it on my pedal board for praise and worship or ambient style music when I first got into it. I was using delays actually to accomplish that reverb style sound. I'll link the video here how I was using the MXR carbon copy to essentially give me a reverb-esque sound, and that's how I used it early on in my career. I never used reverb. Back in the day when I was playing hard rock music, I wanted to cut through a mix as much as possible. I had a hard enough time cutting through a mix with drums and bass and all this stuff going on. 
I didn't want reverb to get in the way either, so I never used reverb. I would turn on delays for solos, but never reverb. It's a very odd thing. So reverb is actually something somewhat new to me, and I became passionate about in recent years. <laughs> Now, of course, this list shouldn't limit you to making it seem like these are the only pedals you'll ever need or the only kind of pedals you'll ever need. There, are, I'm sure there are some of you out there who would choose other kinds of pedals as a top five or a must have, maybe chorus or vibrato of some sort. Uh, I've never really gelled with those kinds of pedals or rather I've never used them enough to justify having them on my pedal board. So I typically have a unit style pedal on my pedal board like the HX Stomp to call upon those kinds of pedals if I ever need it for a specific song. I debated throwing this into top five but I left it out because I left it more towards effects pedals but I highly, highly recommend that you should have a pedal tuner of some sort. I love headstock tuners, but I can't depend on them nearly as much as I could depend on actual foot pedal tuners like the Polytune stuff by TC Electronics or the Boss TU stuff or any of them, the Sonic Research, they're all amazing pedals uh, and I really highly recommend that. So that's my honorable mentions. Please let me know in the comment section below if you agree with my top five. If you don't agree with me, I really want to know what your top five is, no wrong answers. Get, let me have them. I want to I want to interact with you guys. I want to hear your thoughts on what your favorite pedals are. Also, if you want to let me know your top five and actually name the pedals. Don't punk out like I did. I left all of my pedals anonymous in this video, but tell me which ones you actually would choose, not just the the kind of pedal, but what actual pedal maker you would choose. Maybe it'll help others decide on what to buy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please remember to do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment and subscribe below. Hit the bell icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Don't forget to check out some of the affiliate links in the description box below as well. Some of the links actually lead you to pedals that I use in this video secretly. Maybe those links will help you decide on what pedals are best for you based on what you heard in this video. Also feel free to donate to this channel if you choose to do so. There's a link in the description box below that allows you to do that as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching and until next week.